And you said that everyone else had sat on their asses, which suggests you think people hadn't been pulling their weight. Who were you talking about? Well, it wasn't really talking about anyone in particular. It was an off-the-cuff remark after um, the, the news interview had finished, or apparently after it had finished. Uh, and I, I, I'd like to apologise for my choice language. Uh, that was uh, uh, unnecessary. But it was an off-the-cuff remark basically, you know, based on the interview. The interview had been pressing me quite hard, you know, why I hadn't uh, solved this issue, which had been going on since 1994. Um, and, uh, you know, it is frustrating because we're doing everything now to take a leading position, to be on the front foot, to put all of the support in place that responsible bodies and schools need. Um, and it's also frustrating that we've got some questionnaires that are still not there. We've been chasing and chasing them, so we've just written again today to say you need to get your questionnaires in by the end of the week. Now, I understand because obviously the evidence has changed, but you need to be able to move quickly when you get new evidence. So that is something that, yeah, I, I uh, apologise for the language, but it is uh, something that I'm very keen to make progress on. I mean, you apologise for the language, but it showed you're frustrated and that you think some people aren't doing enough. I mean, is it councils? Is it your predecessor here at the Department for Education? No, is it the Prime Minister? No, it's not. It's nobody in particular. But, you know, we've had a change of evidence, which has happened very, very recently. And that's where we've had ceilings, which are... Um, graded as uncritical, non-critical, so you could keep them in action, where there have been failed panels. Now, that means that we need to find out where they all are. Now, we've done a really good job, the department and everybody, we've been working really hard on this. We've done a really good job at identifying 156, but we've still got, and we've got more surveys to do where, where we've had the questionnaires back, so we're working on those the next two weeks, but we've still got some questionnaires we need to get back. And without that, we can't really make the so first schools. step. Is what's no, no, it's whoever, whoever it is, anybody who can give us the questionnaires back would be very gratefully received. To be fair, the evidence has changed very recently. It was only last Thursday. And who's to blame for that? You're obviously frustrated with someone. Actually, it was the interviewer, because the interviewer was making out it was all my fault. So, and, some, and that's what I was saying. Do you ever go into these interviews where everyone ever says anything, but, you know, you've just done a terrible job? And he was basically saying, you know, all these things. I mean, you know, he mentioned 1994, he mentioned 2018. I mean, they're all... You know. I mean, it's partly because he'd done a lot of work, a huge FOI back in March. So it wasn't new information in August. We, no, we were no, it wasn't new. This. The new information was the three cases that came to light over the summer. Um, so way after uh, his, his freedom of information, it was new information that came to light um, where, where those that are assessed as non-critical, there were panels that failed. And we were able, to, well, I was able to send in our structural chartered surveyors and they went in and said, yes, these are assessed as non-critical and they failed. That's new. That's why we've changed the advice. It's very recent. And I do understand, by the way, the frustration for parents and for children but safety has to come first. And when you have that happening, you have to act on it. Now I need everybody else to, you know, to, to give me all the information I need so I can make sure that we can um, get, mitigate the situation and minimise the disruption on children's education. 